Hello! Welcome to my first Nuke tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go over a really easy cleanup. So, let's get started. To start, we're going to import our footage. To do this, we're going to put down a read node. A read node can be put down a couple different ways. So, you can either hit tab, type in read. You can hit R, brings up read. Or you can go to this drop down menu up here and hit read. And the last way you can do it is the way we'll do it is you can open up your folder and drag your footage in. So now we have our footage in, we need to put in the viewer. To do this, hit 1, and this will automatically put down a viewer node for you. While hovering over the footage, hit H to bring it into full, full view. So next what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our footage and our settings match. To do this, double click your footage, and you'll see that it opens up in your properties panel, your read node. So our footage is at HD 1080. And what we're going to need to do is check our settings. To do this, click S. When you hit S, you'll bring up your project settings. And we can see that it automatically made it the 91 frame range. However, it did not copy our format. So we're going to make sure that we change this to 1080. And this is the most appropriate thing you can do at the start of your project, because you'll hate yourself later. All right, so what we're going to do to start is we're going to do some tracking. Now what's cool about Nuke is that you can actually do your tracking in your Roto node. So to lay down a Roto node, you can either tab in Roto, or you can hit O. Now notice while I have my footage selected and I hit O, it automatically connects the node to the pipe. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click our root directory, zoom in, and we see on the left we have three new uh, tools to work with. The first tool is a select tool, the second tool is an add points, and the third one is a bezier tool. Each one has various options if you drop them down. We're just going to stick with the regular bezier tool. So I'm going to grab an area that looks like it has a little bit of contrast, not too far away from anything. And in my Roto node, I'm going to right click and hit Planar Track. When I hit Planar Track, it automatically gives me this Planar Track layer, and my Bezier is inside of it. And we're going to call this Hat Track. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top left, and I'm going to turn off Perspective, because we really don't need Perspective. And really, I don't think we're going to need Shear either, so we'll turn off Shear as well. So now I'm going to track backwards. So the track looks like it's doing a pretty good job. So the next step is going to be to export our track so we can use it for our patch. To do this, you're going to go over to the tracking tab, click it, and uh, oh yeah, first let's make sure that we set the reference frame for our track, which is this little button right here. That makes sure that when we do our patch, it won't be distorted at the beginning. So I'm going to create a corner pin, and you can see in the node graph that it automatically gives you this green connection to let you know that there's an expression linking these two nodes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on our patch. So to do that, I'm going to put down a also, just for cleanup, if you press control or hold control, you can click in the middle of a pipe and create a dot, which is very handy. So what I'm going to do is lay down a frame hold node. The frame hold node is basically like a freeze frame in After Effects. It just allows you to pick a frame and freeze it. So we're going to use the first frame. So now that we have the first frame, you see it won't change at all throughout. What we're going to do is we're going to isolate an area that we want to move over. So I'm going to hit O again to bring up a roto node. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little mask, a little patch right here, not too far away. I'm going to bring it in a little bit, actually. So what I'm going to do is this handy thing that the Bezier tool has, which is control drag out these points to make a feather. And this is just a little box feather. It's very useful. 
So now that we have our roto, you can see on our alpha channel, nothing's happening. What we need to do is pre-multiply right here. Now we have our alpha channel separated. So what we need now to do is put in a pre-mult. Pre-mult will pre-multiply the alpha by the RGB, which will leave us with this little patch. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take this patch and we're going to put it over our original footage. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the pre-mold first, followed by the dot, and we're going to hit M for merge. This will automatically link up your merge node so that the A pipe is connected to the first selection and the B pipe is connected to the second selection. So now that we have it hooked up, we can't actually see anything happening. So what we need to do is we need to put down a transform node. With this transform node, we're going to hold control and drag to our patch. That way we can move the pivot point to be exactly where the middle of our patch is. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to drag our patch up and over our blemish. So now we have a little patch over that area. And we need to take this corner pin right here that we use for our track and now put it into our pipe. So now that we have it all in, let's just take a look at what the final result is. Pretty good. There's a little bit of a, a tracking issue right around here. But ultimately, got us pretty far pretty quickly. Now, the one thing I do notice is there's a, a darker spot because I'm taking a gradiated patch and moving it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put down a grade node. A grade node is super helpful. Can make sure that we do a lot of our color correction in grade nodes because you don't actually need nuke x to use a grade node. All right, so to start, let's just try multiplying it up a little bit. So I'm liking that for the top, but I'm not necessarily liking it for the bottom of the patch, which is bound to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop in a ramp. In fact, we're going to move this grade node up above our corner pin. That way the ramp doesn't have to move around without it. So we're going to type in ramp and we're going to hook up the mass part of the grade to the ramp. This way we can control the fall off of it. So let's view the ramp. If you double click you'll bring it up into the viewer. Oh, my overlay is off. Q is to bring your overlay on and off in Nuke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out over here where the patch is. So I want it to be white at the top, black at the bottom. I'm also going to change the fall off to be P linear. It's my preferred one. So now, when we view it, we have more of a fall off happening on the bottom. We can probably do a little less multiplication as well. There we go. So that's just a basic way to do a patch using Nuke. The next thing we would do is put down a write node. Unfortunately, I'm using Nuke Assist at the moment, which doesn't allow you to use the write node. But that is my first tutorial. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned a couple things. Have a good one.